Do you like holding holds? How about gripping grips? Do you like slapping them slopers, squeezing them pinches, dunking them jugs, and clamping them crimps? If you said yes to any or all of these questions, you just might be a frequent FDP abuser. So today, we're learning how to do some sweet, sweet rehab. In this video, we'll discuss the injuries and rehab activities associated with the flexor digitorum profundus, or FDP. We'll start with relevant anatomy, then move on to internal risk factors, causes of injury, testing and symptoms, and finally, how to heal and retrain to get you back to sending. The FTP is the most important finger flexor we have. It helps in multiple hand positions and developing its strength is vital to our advancement in climbing. But it's also the second most commonly injured tissue for climbers. So what is it? The FTP is a muscle that originates on the ulna and interosseous membrane, unlike many of the other flexors that originate at the medial epicondyle. It travels down the anterior forearm and then splits into four tendons which attach at the base of our distal phalange and allows the FTP to fully flex the fingers. There are three main anatomical traits or risk factors that can make your FTP more prone to injury. The biggest anatomical risk factor is a direct lack of strength of the FTP muscles themselves. This makes them more prone to injury due to an inability to handle the strain and stress placed upon them while climbing. Lack of strength in the shoulders is an additional internal risk factor. If you have weakness in your shoulders, you'll become more dependent on your forearms. This will place added strain or stress repetitively to the FTP, which can produce an injury. Also, shortening of the FTP can make them more prone to injury as they are less able to handle rapid lengthening of the muscle body and or tendon and are typically weaker in a lengthened position. Commonly, due to a combination of strengthening the tissue without stretching or lengthening the tissue, this shortened tissue can produce injuries when combined with some external factors. So we know what the risk factors are, but how does the FTP actually get injured in the first place? Again, there are three main causes. The most common cause of injury is simply exceeding the tensile strength of the FTP. This can happen when your foot blows off a hold, which suddenly transfers all that load to your fingers. It could also happen when you don't or can't get all of your fingers on a hold, meaning that the load can't be spread across your fingers. Either way, when the tissue gets overloaded, something's gotta give. And in this case, that means the tissue tears to some extent. The second most common cause is simply overuse. Since the FTP is used for basically every type of hold and climbing, it gets a lot of mileage. Overuse happens when the FTP muscle or tendons are not given enough time to heal between periods of intense activity. This creates a snowball effect where the stress piles up, ultimately leading to weakening of the tissue and higher risk of more significant or chronic injury. Not taking rest days and overly intense training are the most common paths to overuse. When your fingers are forcefully extended beyond their normal range of motion, the FTP tendons are lengthened to an unnatural degree, making an injury possible. This could be the result of a foot blowing while holding on with one hand, or it could be the result of an awkward fall. Rapid, uncontrolled extension while like, trying to maintain this position can also result in an injury to the FTP. An injury due to forced extension or hyperextension can be more likely if risk factor number three, a shortened FTP, applies to you. Now that we know a bit more about the FTP and how it gets injured, let's discuss the tests you can use to determine the severity of an FTP injury. We're gonna do five simple tests and then compare results to this super cool chart so you can see how significant your injury is. Be sure to note what you feel and observe during each test as well as the location and intensity of pain, either none, mild, moderate, or severe. You don't actually wanna do anything that causes you more than mild pain, but you should be able to infer the intensity by how much or how little force is required to evoke symptoms. The first is simply observation. This is a no risk, no pain test. We're looking for swelling or discoloration here. The most likely location for swelling would be at the injured finger itself, particularly near the DIP joint. You may also experience some swelling in the palm closer to the base of the finger. Swelling may be harder to see in the forearm unless it's pretty severe. Discoloration at the finger may occur, but will likely be minimal, if any, though discoloration in the forearm can be more pronounced. Test two, fist test. Simply open your hand fully, then flex to make a fist. 
If you can perform this without pain, gradually squeeze tighter. Test number three, active range of motion, ARAM of DIP. Simply try and extend your fingers fully, then flex only the DIP joint. You may need to use your other hand to stop the PIP from flexing so you can isolate the DIP joint. Test number four, resisted DIP flexion. Hold the PIP of your injured finger in place with your healthy hand, then use your thumb of the healthy hand to resist flexion at the DIP joint. Start with mild pressure, then work up to moderate and heavy pressure if each stage does not produce pain. Do not perform if you are unable to move the finger in the prior ARAM test. Test number five, palpation. While palpation won't likely cause the injury to actually worsen, it may cause some discomfort which may affect the other tests. Hence, we do this last. Simply palpate the entire finger along the track of the FTP and see what you feel. Start with mild pressure and progress to moderate or even heavy pressure if each stage of pressure does not cause pain. Now that you've performed the tests, compare your symptoms to the chart to determine the severity of your injury. This chart will be available in the show notes, so check the link in the description for that. Now, there's one last thing we need to do before moving on to treatment. There is a chance that your FTP injury isn't actually an FTP injury. To rule out other possibilities, we'll again perform a few simple tests. This is known as differential diagnosis. Here, our main concern is ruling out a lumbrical, pulley, and FDS injury. These tests will involve loading the effective tissue in various hand positions and then noting the intensity of your symptoms. You'll then use this information to see what best matches your results. I'll have a chart up at the end for your reference, just like we did with the previous section. For all these tests, you can use a mobile board, hang board, or just your opposite hand. Test number one, open hand flexion at DIP. Place the affected hand with just the fingertips on the palm of the unaffected hand. Keep the PIP joint straight and flex at the DIP. Pull down as hard as you comfortably can. Test number two, open hand single finger flexion at DIP. This is the same as before, but now isolate just the affected and then the neighboring fingers. Test number three, open hand flexion at PIP. Place the affected hand with the fingertips and middle phalange on the palm of the affected hand. Keep the PIP and DIP flexed now. Pull down as hard as you comfortably can. Test number four, open hand single finger flexion at PIP. This is now the same as before, but now just isolate the affected finger and, and then the neighboring fingers. Test number five, half crimp. Keep the DIP extended and the PIP flexed. Place the full pad of the distal phalange on the palm of your affected hand. Pull down as hard as you comfortably can. Test number six, full cramp. Hyperextend now slightly at the DIP joint while increasing the flexion at the PIP joint. Just the fingertips now will be on the palm of the affected hand. Pull down as hard as you comfortably can. <clears throat> Once you've performed each of these tests, Make note of your results and then compare those results to the chart that we've made to see which injury yours truly falls under. Treatment of an FTP injury should be broken down into acute, subacute, early chronic slash remodeling stages and late remodeling or retraining stages. I'm gonna show you a variety of exercises that will be used throughout your rehab process, but the frequency, order, and intensity of these will vary based on the stage you're in. As such, I've once again created charts in the show notes so you can have an easy reference and so this video isn't filled with just a bunch of information that's irrelevant to you. Rehab activity number one, active range of motion. For the FTP, this involves going from full extension of the fingers and wrist to full flexion. This will just look like opening and closing your hand to make a fist and then curling that fist into greater flexion. Rehab activity number two, self tissue mobilization. This can be as simple as massaging the affected area with your own hand or as advanced as using an instrument to do so, such as a Graston tool or massage gun. Perform for three to five minutes total over the affected area with the amount of pressure depending on the stage of your injury. Rehab activity number three, stretching. In order to target just the FTP, we'll focus on full extension of the fingers and wrist while keeping the elbow flexed. 
we don't want to extend the elbow here as the FDP does not cross over the joint at the elbow. As such, extending the elbow could create some neural tension or stretch other flexor muscles such as the wrist flexors. Hold for 30 to 60 seconds and repeat two to three times. Rehab activity number four, submax holds. Submax holds are relatively long duration holds performed at low intensity. The purpose is to stimulate the tissue without loading it too far and causing harm. There are two important factors to follow to determine the intensity, pain and fatigue. These submax holds should not produce more than a like, 2 out of 10 on the pain scale. Regarding fatigue, this should not cause you to fail at the end of the rep. You should be producing a comfortable amount of force that is sustained for 30 seconds and repeatable after only a 30 second rest. These should be performed on different holds, starting with a jug, then moving to a sloper, drag, and finally crimp position. The intent is to start easy and then move to progressively harder hold types for the FDP. Rehab activity number five, eccentric finger rolls. This is a wonderful exercise to truly promote healing of the tendon. It will elongate the tendon on our load, which will stimulate healing. I prefer doing this with an Olympic bar and having the forearms rest on a bench, though you can also use a dumbbell and rest the weight on your thigh. Start in a fully flexed position with the fingers and wrist flexed and the elbow slightly flexed as well. Then slowly lower the weight until it is just about to fall off your fingers, then curl back up. Rehab activity number six, crimps to open hand eccentrics on mobile board. This exercise is exactly how it sounds. You'll start using a mobile board on the half crimp position and you'll slowly move into an open hand position, all while having the fingers loaded with appropriate force. Curl back into the crimp position and repeat for sets of eight to 10 repetitions with five second eccentric period. Rehab activity number seven, open hand farmer carries. This is only necessary for moderate to severe injuries or if you're uncomfortable progressing to hangboard training. The purpose is to bridge you from eccentrics on a mobile board to hangboarding or retraining. The weight added should be adequate for you to hold comfortably for the duration indicated on the chart without pain greater than a two out of 10. Rehab activity number eight, removal of aggravating factors. This is particularly important in the chronic or overuse category. If your issue is overtraining, overclimbing, or performing certain activities that continue to irritate your FTP, these need to be eliminated while you're healing. Otherwise, you're simply negating all the rehab work you're doing and effectively working against yourself. Rehab activity number nine, hangboarding. Once you're into the retraining stage, you'll need to start a hangboarding routine to strengthen the FTP. This may simply mean incorporating more open hand work into your current hangboard routine or starting a brand new hangboard routine specifically working on the open hand or three finger drag position. I recommend a max hang protocol using an edge that allows an open hand or three finger drag position, which would often be like a 20 to 30 millimeter edge with four to six rounds of 10 second holds. The timeline to recover from an FTP injury will of course depend on the severity. If you follow a plan that removes aggravating factors and retrains the tissue, a mild to moderate strain will heal in about two to three months, while a moderate to severe strain could take up to four months. As always, individual timelines will vary slightly. Before we wrap things up, is there anything we can do to prevent an FTP injury from occurring in the first place? Of course. Listen to your body, watch for signs of overuse, write down all your training and climbing frequency so you can see if you're doing too much. Strengthen and lengthen. Do some eccentric finger rolls to full extension of the FTP. This will promote healing of the tendon through a full range of motion for the muscle slash tendon, which will make it more mobile and more resilient. Work on the open hand or three finger drag position while hangboarding. If you're already hangboarding, this is a great opportunity to strengthen the FTP and make it more resilient to injuries in the future. Number four, limit your attempts at your hardest problem to a good number to prevent an injury. I always choose seven as my limit, but if it's more challenging for you, move that number down to five. And that's it. If you knew nothing about the FTP before this video, you're now infinitely more knowledgeable on this topic. Until next time, train that FTP back into prime condition so you can climb harder so you can send that V13 using only open hands while your friends are still full crimping V2s like Gumby's. And repeat. Do you like holding? <laughs> I remember reading this last night. Do you like holding holds? Like
No, f you. <laughs> As such, I have once again created charts in the show notes just so you have easy reference so this video just doesn't fill with a bunch of information that's irrelevant to you. I started, started something kind of sarcastic. Once again, I did it for you. <laughs> the purpose is to bridge you from eccentrics on the mobile hangboard, the mobile board. I was gonna, I was gonna keep it, but just, I'm, I'm dying. Be sure to watch our other videos, 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 videos. Reactivity number eight. Reactivity have a bit have a bit of a Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.